Kia ora everyone and welcome to part one of our Dementia Med Talk. Today I have the pleasure of talking to Dr Diana North, a general practitioner with a special interest in the care of older people. This particular Med Talk will concentrate on the diagnosis of dementia. So Diana, welcome. Hi. To start with, are you able to set the scene for cognitive impairment and comment on someone who might benefit from assessment? The diagnosis of cognitive impairment or dementia is a big diagnosis and it can be very, very scary for some patients. The first thing I need to think about is how do these patients present? Well, they may come in and say, I'm having problems with my memory. You need to stop, not ignore this and to take it seriously. Or their family members may ring you and say, I'm worried about mum or dad. I'm worried about them driving. Could you check them out? Sometimes it may be that you indirectly notice this through your nurse or through yourself, that they're missing appointments or they're muddling up their medication. You can find that they're dodging questions, they're dodging answering, they're saying, oh, I just don't know. Or they may reflect and turn to the person next to them and, and say, what do you think? So they're bringing them into the conversation, their head turning, that can be a sign that they're having problems with their memory. The first thing to note is it can be overwhelming. Can I do that in a 15 minute consultation with another five things? No, you can't. You need to stop and say, this is an important issue. What it's going to involve is a consultation with me where I can ask some questions and do an examination. I'm then gonna ask you to have a consultation with my nurse for formal assessment and then you'll come back to me so we can make a diagnosis and make a plan. If we're concerned about cognitive impairment, what are the key points that we should cover during our initial consultation? Really what I'm wanting to know is, is this new, is it sudden, or has this been slowly progressing over a number of years? I want to know what sort of things are being forgotten and what the impact of these issues are in their life. What is it stopping them from being able to do. I want to know if they're becoming more socially withdrawn and whether they're continuing with their hobbies and interests. And the last thing I want to know is I want to know, are they safe? Are there any concerns about their safety? Remember, the patient themselves may not be the best person to tell you some of these issues. So to have that first consultation with a family member or a friend can be really valuable. Do you do a neurological exam? Yes, I do. But I do a shortened neurological exam. And in fact, if you have the health pathways, you'll see in there there's a five minute neurological exam for patients with suspected dementia. So what does this include? Of course, you're going to notice the person's gait and how they generally appear as they come into the room. You're going to look at their eyes, look at their responsiveness to light and their eye movements. You're looking for facial asymmetry. And then I actually do do a neurological exam on their arms and legs. And I'm looking at their tone, I'm looking at their power and their sensation and reflexes. What I'm really trying to figure out is, is there a brain lesion? Has the person had a stroke? Or do they have signs of Parkinson's? At this point, I stop my first consultation. I've taken a good history, I've done a five minute neurological exam, and I say to them, I'm going to need more information. Can you please book an appointment for formal assessment with my nurse? For our second consultation, what assessments and tests should we be doing? The first thing I do is actually ask my nurse to set up a series of blood tests. These include a full blood count and a CRP. I want to know the patient's electrolytes and renal function, their calcium, their B12 and folate, their thyroid function and their liver function tests. I also want them to get a urine sample done at this point. The formal testing I'm requesting is actually either a mocha or a rudis. These are good tests to look at the different dimensions of dementia and what is being affected. If you've got a patient who has had less education or for whom English is a second language, the rudis test can sometimes be 
easier for them to understand. I then asked the nurse to look at their instrumental activities of daily living. These are the complex tasks that keep us independent in the community. They're things like shopping, cooking, house cleaning, laundry, doing their finances, using a phone. Can they drive? Those complex tasks are very important because remember, the diagnosis of dementia is not just the cognitive impairment, it's how they're, it's affecting their functioning in the community. Sometimes when you're doing the mocha and the rudis, I ask the other patient or the patient's family or friend to leave the room and they can fill out the GP COG informant interview. It's a very short interview, six questions I think, but it gives a view of how they've noticed change over the last few years. So those are the four steps of the formal assessment. So how do you prepare for the follow-up consultation? The first thing I do is I make sure the patient has booked a double appointment. I spend the first bit of that appointment looking at the results. I look at the Rudis and Mocha scores. What level of cognitive impairment am I seeing? I look at the blood tests and the urine result. Has this patient got an infection or is there a metabolic cause for their confusion? I look at the informant interview. What are the family noticing with this patient and how is it affecting them? If I have time, I do ask, I want to talk to them, my nurse, particularly to see if they have any issues or any concern. It's really important to look at the patient's medications. We prescribe a lot of medications that can increase confusion particularly the anticholinergics, and you can get lists of those through Red Whale or through, you know, the health pathways. But this gives you the medications that you may consider reducing or stopping to improve your patient's functioning. Finally, I want to look at the functional capacity of the person, to look at those IADLs, to see is there anything stopping them remaining in the community and living independently and safely. Having prepared myself for the consultation, I then can go in with a holistic view. I know the level of impairment. I know potentially what I can do to treat acute causes, and I can make a plan with the patient. Do you have any tips for clarifying the diagnosis? You know, the first thing is we have to make the diagnosis. So I sit back, having looked at all my results, and I say, is this an acute onset? Is this actually more delirium than it is dementia? If I think it's delirium, I need to manage acute infections and to sort out metabolic disturbances. Do I think it's depression? Do I think that the patient is just withdrawing because they're depressed, they've had some traumatic life events, or they've just lost interest in life? If I think it's depression, I'm going to sidetrack, and I actually spend some time doing the geriatric depression score in that consultation. And then I talk to the patient about the management of depression and how it is affecting their memory rather than focusing on their memory. Finally, there will be a group with dementia, and at this point you will have a pretty clear sense of whether this is a mild form, a moderate form, and what impact this is having on the patient's life. Then I move down the dementia pathway. General practice is time pressured. Do you have any suggestions for streamlining the process? Yes, I think the first thing is not to have huge expectations of yourself. This takes time. This is not a 15 minute consultation and diagnosis. So set yourself up with a longer process. Know it and have your nurse trained really well to be able to manage the assessments. Try and get as much information as you can on your PMS. Get those quick keys with the IADLs in place so you can just do dot IADL and out comes your list of issues you want to discuss. Finally, I think the thing is about that last consultation is be prepared. Don't go into it and expect to go through all the results with the patient in the room. It will take you five minutes. You need to spend some time 
preparing for them to have their final consultation. Thank you, Diana, for coming in and talking to us today about the diagnosis of dementia. And we look forward to joining you soon for part two of our Dementia Med Talk on optimization of the management of dementia. Thank you. Thank you.